And so we are back, and now for this episode, we are going to be talking about Ubisoft. So, Ubisoft conference, I thought was pretty good, even though I felt awkward watching sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Um, so let's start off kind of going down the list of what they talked about. Um, right off the bat, they talked about Mario Cross Rabbids. Yeah. And they had, um, crap, I keep Miyamoto. Re- Miyamoto, Miyamoto come out like a wrestler <laughs> yeah. with the freaking gun. Yeah. And that was the coolest thing. That, that was really funny and really cool until they both got up there. And, like, it was an awkward fight for power. I'm yeah. Talking. Miyamoto basically just took over Ubisoft press conference for a while there and just started yeah. talking. And you could tell <laughs> the CEO was just kind of like, I want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And like, as, what are you doing? Like, I think it went on for a good, like, five, ten minutes. And, like, the more it went on, the more I'm, like, cringing because I'm like, this is so awkward. You could tell you wa- oh. he wants him to stop, but he doesn't want to say, hey, <laughs> shut up. On, like, the stream to Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, it went on. It was really cool. It was really... It was, it was also cool that they showed the the guy that was working on the game. Yeah. And, like, how passionate he was. That was that, that was, was cool. really cool. Because, I mean, he was, like... And that's the thing. and Which was... It kind of saddens me sometimes. Developers don't really get the spotlight like that. No. And, like, they need to. They're and, the like, they work, working on yeah, the Yeah, they work and slave on those games. And, like... It's cool every now and then when they do get the spotlight because it's like, I want to know those people. Yeah. Like, I want to know people like that. Like, this poor um, guy's been working on Rabbid, Rabbids games his whole life. He's finally getting a good one. <laughs> right? He's just like, finally, I can combine Mario with it. And it looked amazing. It's it like so XCOM. Cool. It's it like XCOM, so cool. like Mario slash Rabbids. Yeah. And it looked hilarious. Um, the gameplay of it was so much fun. And, like, my theme for Ubisoft conference... It was awkward. The guy talking <laughs> didn't really know what he, he knew what he was talking about, but you could tell he was nervous. Yeah, and he was kind of like going over his words. I know I wouldn't do better in his position, but I'm just saying if you're gonna have a presenter, yeah, you should ha- kind of have somebody that can eloquently flow. Yeah, um, and honestly, strange thing because we didn't talk about this last time. No, uh, Alicia Tyler. Oh yeah, she's yeah. usually like in Ubisoft all the time. Yeah, so no, um, no, like comedy, really no comedy presenters, no. which was that's fine. Uh, as much as I like her, that's fine. Right. So yeah, they showed that game off. Looked amazing. Um, and I think they came out with Assassin's Creed next. Yeah. Uh, showed off another trailer that we just got done seeing at. Xbox's conference, which I felt like they should have just waited for Ubisoft's conference to show Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Because that's their big game. Right. That's coming back. Um, but then they, they didn't show too much of it because they didn't want to rehash what they showed at Microsoft because it was a long demo. Yeah. Um, but then they like, okay, we're going to go to the the Ubisoft Treehouse or whatever it was called, and we're going to see these guys play this demo, and they show <laughs> an off-cam footage of them playing Ubisoft, like the Assassin's Creed Origins. And I'm like, are they really going to sit there and play the demo like this? <laughs> like, it was so terrible. Because it's like, and it, was it, like it, was, the... it was a good while while they sat there and just like, filmed it and i'm like it was like so funny because they were outside and the lighting was so bad it was couldn't see the screen and it's like do they know that this is really bad footage right now like (laughs) are you gonna cut into the actual game feed what's happening here oh no they're still gonna keep showing the screen (laughs) right and they're like okay stay tuned after to you know watch us play this whole demo i'm like oh thank god (laughs) so they, they went out of that um and then they showed off what? The crew. The crew two. Crew two. Um eh. Eh. It was, crew one wasn't it, fantastic. Crew, crew but one I, didn't light on fire. I guess crew two 
Now they, I guess now they added planes. Planes and boats. And, and like uh, they, they just they made it look like you can literally drive anything anywhere. So I guess that in that sense, it's pretty cool. It's Yeah, it's a cool concept. But then, like I, I say with my theme for Ubisoft, the presenter was kind of boring. He went on and on. And I literally, it felt like just garble yeah. the entire time. Yeah. And I'm just watching this video. I'm like, Okay, more cars. That trailer was so long. It too. was. It was so long. Like, it it was so end? long, and then they showed more of it afterwards, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, oh gosh, okay. That, does people really like the crew that much to show that much of the crew? Ugh. Um, but then they showed off after that another game that didn't really light the world on fire, but I enjoyed my time with it. Steep. Um, yeah. But unfortunately. I guess it's only the Olympic exp- like it's only the Olympics. It the road to um whatever place they're gonna be in for Winter Olympics yeah. next year. So it's like kinda of like in a Korea. Yeah, it's like a license thing. I'm like yeah. okay, yeah. cool. Um then they showed off South Park. South Park. And yeah. that looked hilarious. So good. Wait, was there a release date? October. Okay. Yeah, everything gets coming out in October. Freaking October. October is the death month. Um, Wolfenstein's coming out then, too. Wolfenstein, South Park. <sighs> Assassin's uh, Creed. Assassin's Creed. Um, the Evil Marvel Within. Rabbits game. Marvel, uh, Mario Rabbids. Uh, Wait, isn't, Mar- M- isn't Mario Odyssey coming out then, too? Mario Odyssey. Oh, I think it was something. Maybe. No, it was October. It was October. I was going to say, I thought so. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That yeah. game, that, that month's going to suck. Um, but, yeah, they showed off South Park, and, yeah, it looked amazing. I had so much fun with the first game. Yeah, Stick of Truth was amazing. I'm really liking that they're doing the superhero stuff. Oh, yeah. Because I always loved those episodes when they were playing, like, the superheroes. Yeah, I should have I should have known that... Uh, Timmy was would be Professor X. Right. <laughs> I should have known. Like. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're going to have like a Deadpool, like a oh, man. slash character. Well, you know, I wonder if they're going to have like actual Marvel and DC, like, you know, customized options. Ooh. Like, yeah, if they got a license or from them they, or something. If they, if they got likeness and license. Oh, that'd license be really material. Cool. That'd be that really suit sweet. It'll be the Flash or something. Yes, I'm excited for that game. Um, I, it's funny because, you know, when they first announced that, they're like, okay, this time it's gonna be different. There's not gonna be too many delays because we got the engine that we needed, and then it basically became how Stick of Truth was. Yeah. They kept delaying <laughs> and delaying it, and you're like, and then they went quiet, and you're like, oh crap, is this game done? Yeah. And they finally showed scared. that off. I was getting scared. I, I was too because I had it pre-ordered. I had the Stick of Truth thing for the PlayStation 4, and every, like, month or so when it's coming up, your pre-order has been canceled. Oh, lovely. And then it kept messing with my Stick of Truth game. Cause, really? Yeah, because it would cancel the pre-order and then deny me access to the Stick of Truth. What? Yeah. I was getting really mad until they finally, I'm not even, I haven't even pre-ordered it again. But they let me have access to my Stick of Truth now. Because they okay. realized that that was stupid. Yes. Because it's like, okay, I actually paid the full price for the game, but then you refund me, and then you take away my my access to the game, and then not let me pre-order it. Yeah. That's a little silly. Right. But yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, the other game I'm also excited for, Far Cry Five. So awesome, dude! That game looks amazing. I love. Ubisoft pushing the edge of storytelling yeah, with their games. Uh, I like that this one is going back to the United States. Actually, for the, f- for the first, first time, time in a Ubisoft, uh, in a Far Cry game. Yeah. Because, yeah. We're getting controversial in this one. We're, we're in Montana. Yeah, we're Montana and we're dealing with uh, religious, extremists. religious extremists that... Uh, People are getting an outrage about, it, even though people didn't get an outrage about far, uh, Outlast Two, and that's way worse. Than this game. Oh man! Let me yeah. tell you, I've played Outlast Two already. Outlast Two is way worse than what you see in Far Cry Five. Oh Let yeah. me tell you, because <laughs> I've seen some things, man. Yo, 
Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. I see. I saw like <sighs> I saw I saw one thing that was super creepy in that game, and it was like it was nuts. It was like a dude in a hallway, and there was like mm-hmm. a little girl, mm-hmm. and she was hung, and she got pulled up in the ceiling. And I'm like, yep, I've seen that. I've seen one that like this freaking crazy witch owl looking thing comes at me. It was quiet the entire game and so i'm walking and all of a sudden i hear god hates you and i'm like what (laughs) and i just see her and she has this big freaking i don't know what it was because i don't know what it was because i didn't take the time to look at it because i saw the figure and the outline and it looked (laughs) so huge and so intimidating i said nope and i turned around (laughs) and i ran and i'm in the chat and my my friend nick is just cracking up he's like what did you see i'm like i don't know but i don't want to find out (laughs) and then like it chases you for a good while and like that's the thing with people that are complaining about far cry 5 yeah okay it has themes of religion in it yeah um for one the cross in Far Cry 5 is more of a Scientology cross. Yeah. I've actually looked up this stuff because me and Nick had a really big conversation about this. It looks like a Scientology cross. So, okay, don't really get too butthurt about that. <laughs> and I, I'm Christian, so it's like, I'm not offended by that. Cause, and then also, it's you got to think of it as in terms of a work of art. Right. I'm if not... you don't, if you're offended, don't play it. Just don't play it. You don't. No one's forcing you to play Far Cry Five, or forcing you to play Outlast Two. Um, if you're getting upset about Far Cry Five, don't play Outlast Two because I think you will just bleed from your eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. Because I only played an hour of Outlast Two, and I'm like, why did no one bitch about this game? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, this has full crosses that are very creepy, and hallways of blood that looks so realistic on my pro that was super creepy oh, and then man. just that where the the big crow lady was just like god hates you you should die and all this other stuff and like demonic sounding and i'm like oh my gosh i am so unsettled right now <laughs> and like she creeped in the doorway too oh no and she was like god is dead and you are going to die and i'm like this face. <laughs> what did I just see? And here. Oh my gosh. And so like, yeah, anyways. Far Cry 5. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, but also, how serious is the story going to be? They made right. it. They made the point and say, okay, this is a serious game. And then they showed the boom, boom, boom trailer. Like... They're they're doing they're starting gameplay right it's a gameplay trailer and it looks very interesting and you can like command people now so that was cool I think was it commands or was it co op it was commands he also oh, that was an AI he, character because like, I assumed that was just a, another player playing right he point clicked he actually like point and clicked on the water tower there and she went up there and oh, okay. posted I just assumed that was co op and he was saying like a waypoint maybe because I know there's co op it's full. Maybe Full it's both. campaign co-op. Yeah, so maybe yeah. you can, like... I think you can because in the first... Well, in Far Cry 4, you can do the guns for hire thing. Yeah. And you can call in AI people. So yeah. maybe that's what that was. Um, but yeah, they show that off and it's so serious. And then as soon as he starts killing things, it goes into the trailer. Which I thought was kind of weird. Yeah, that that was like... And it, it almost made you feel like, how much is this game complete? Right. And they kind of took me out of it. Yeah. I'm so excited, but they took I'm, me out of it. Yeah, as far I'm, as I was like super, demo. I was super sold. I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's sneaking around. And then as soon as he got done, started going crazy and shooting things. It goes into this trailer and it's just like, boom, 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 boom. And it's like all funny and high up and stuff. And it's like, isn't this game supposed to be like dark and serious? Yeah. I mean, they, they showed stuff off. Like you can fly. There's airplane combat. Oh, yeah. That airplane I'm excited combat. for. So Lots more characters, I think. And I think you can actually customize your character now, too, if I remember yeah, correctly. I think so, yes. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I'm, I'm excited. 
comes out what February? Yeah, it's in like early. Yeah. So yeah, that comes out February. Yeah, pretty February. cool. Um, then they showed off something pretty interesting. I think for you was very interesting. Yeah. I wasn't really too sold on that. Yet. I want to see more. Yet. It's an asterisk. Yeah, I want to see more. Um, they showed off, for those that remember, Assassin's Creed Black Flag yeah. had an awesome ship combat. Oh, yeah. Everybody loved it. And everybody's like, why not make a game dedicated to this and get rid of the Assassin's Creed like moniker of it and all the baggage of Assassin's Creed and just make a dedicated pirate game because it was so good. So, they showed off the trailer for a new IP. U- Ubisoft is killing it with new IPs. Yeah. Um, they showed off what's called Skull and Bones, mm-hmm. which, to me, looked, and coming from For Honor, it looked like a For Honor, but with ships. Yeah. yeah. But then apparently there's actual single player. Yeah, yeah, they did say that. They did announce player. that there was single player. My whole thing with this, though, I'm excited. I loved the ship combat in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Yeah. But you're telling me you really can't just... You can't be the the captain and, like, leave your ship to attack another ship? Yeah. Are you stuck on this ship? They didn't explain that. Right. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything talking about that yet. Like, I think you're stuck on that ship. Like, you are the ship. Yeah. And if that's the case, that's... That's where I'm not. Ex- I, I'm still excited for the game, but it's like now I can wait for that game, because I, I like the combination of playing with the ship, and then boarding another ship and attacking the crew. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. But uh, yeah, no, the combat looks really cool. It's like they got different ships. You got you can customize your ship, have armors and armor types for it. Um, definitely want to hear more about that though. What's this battle for Titan? So I, um, I'm trying to remember what. Um, and I'll need to check the name, but it was it was that game where they showed it off on the Switch, and it was that game where it, it kind of looked like like No Man's Sky kind of, but you could like build. Oh yeah, with the toys. It was really cool. You could like build your ship on the controller, and well, that was really cool. That it was, was like pretty a sweet. Lego Dimensions type thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like um, like a ship builder. Yeah. And you can like change your different guns on the fly, which looks cool. Like it looks freaking awesome. But how much is that gonna cost? I know that's gonna be a lot. <laughs> like, how much is that gonna cost? Is like. I can't believe they're actually still doing game, uh, toys to life games. Yeah. I thought that that kind of died. Yeah. Um, but that looked interesting. Um, another game that looked weird, the Transference game that I don't know what it's about. No idea what it's about. They sh- they like, show... Look, we got Elijah yeah, Wood. Yeah, we got Elijah Wood talking about something. And he's helping us. Isn't that cool? And it's like, it that's that's literally what happened. I'm like... <laughs> He's talking about how awesome it is to work for a VR game and all this stuff, and it's gonna be horror. It sounds and like it's supposed, it's supposed to, to be mess with your mind. And this game where you're like a patient of some sort, and you you like in VR, you go into VR. Yeah, and, and like it's like you live through these different realities or whatever, these different virtual reality scenarios. <laughs> And you couldn't tell, like, I don't think they showed one clip of gameplay. No. No, it was just all It weird. was just all, like, weird live-action things. Yeah. So, like, yeah, no context to really what that's going to be and look like. It's just yeah. kind of like, okay, that was that was weird. Like, it was intriguing, but they didn't really sell anybody on that, I don't think. Um Another thing before we talk about the main event that I know you're excited to talk about. They did not talk about Splinter Cell. No Splinter Cell. Nothing. No, Nothing about Splinter Cell? They nothing even... about Rainbow. No, no. And they even, at the going back all the way to the beginning of the press conference, they even went as far as to like show off some of their old games. And they showed Splinter and Cell. And freaking Splinter Cell was in there. Yep. And I'm like... And it made me excited thinking, oh, 
okay. Like they're showcasing all the games that they uh, they may be talking about and bringing back, and we didn't hear anything about Splinter Cell until what was it like a few days after the event? They say we're working on the game. Like yeah. Splinter Cell is still like it being exists. it exists. Like, We're just not ready to talk about it yet. Well, you could have said it, you could have at least been on stage and said it exists. Like you go you, to you go to great lengths to talk about what we're going to be talking about next. Yeah. When we know that game's not coming out for a while, why not do a splash screen for Splinter Cell? I mean, you got Nintendo over here literally just saying that something exists and it's going to be <laughs> out next year. I know. No. Not next year. Well, uh, they confirmed that, that they said that they kind of walked that back. Okay, so it's like uh, 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> still, they walked that back. Still, they even said, like, listen, we're working on it. Yeah. I'm telling they're you right like, now it exists. They're like, it's in development. You can at least You can at that. least say, they, hey, Splinter Cell, in development. It just, it, it's Michael kind of, Ernst Ironside is back. It, yeah, it, it's kind of just like... It just, it just makes people feel more comfortable. They don't have to question things and hate you for not saying anything. Yeah, and then that's the thing. Just announce it so people know, instead of theorizing, being like, is it going to ever come back? Yeah. Because it's been far too long since Blacklist. You were just having a bad time. Just like, let me hold this. Did you want another water? Kinda. <laughs> so, yeah, they, uh... They don't talk about that, Ugh. which was a big, there, the mic's not going to pick me up, which was a big disappointment. Then, they actually show off a game that everybody thought was dead. Matt, I'll let you talk about this one. Boy, they done did it. They came out, and they start this trailer. It's a cinematic, it's a CG trailer, and they just show, like, they're like, maybe in like China or something and then zoom out and this dude this monkey dude he's talking to dude, this monkey dude was like vulgar and he was and it was great <laughs> yes. it was great it was super vulgar and he's talking to a pig big pig guy and he had like Fu Manchu dude immediately thought that it was beyond good and evil as soon as I saw the and pig man and I didn't immediately think it was that but everybody in the crowd was like is this real? Is it? And then they showed this whole trailer with this monkey the dude. The CG looked amazing. The, oh my like, gosh, the CG. This whole scene, this whole trailer was beautiful. And he had like this grappling hook hand and they're stealing cop cars. And he's got this disc. And he freaking, this other character, this, this, this like diva chick. And they go back to their base, which is on the ship. And he's like, I got it. I got the information you needed and hands it to this lady. And then she's like, all right, whatever, journey, cool. And then they fly their ship into space and then beyond good and evil too. And everybody lost it. They're just like, ah, kind of like when they, well, not as big as when they announced Final Fantasy VII Remake. But (laughs) I was going to say, yeah, no, not that. That was huge. People like, people were like, crapping themselves in their seats. People were like, ah, ah, <laughs> ah. Um, but no, extremely excited about this. Even, even to the point where I did not expect them to have such a mature, like sequel. Mm-hmm. I, I think they said it's going to be a prequel, but still. Yeah. It's like a prequel. And like that, they kind of threw me off because yeah, I saw the pig dude. And I immediately thought, be oh, they're doing it beyond good and evil. Yeah. But then as it went on, and I'm hearing the monkey cuss so much. Yeah. I'm like, I don't think this is beyond good and evil because wasn't that like a kids game? To an extent. Like it was like it had for a younger theme. crowd though. It had some adult themes, but it wasn't like it wasn't a mature game by any yeah. means. Yeah. So like it threw me off for a little bit until like the credits actually showed beyond good and evil, and I'm like, oh, I was right. Now. My whole thing with this game, it looked, the CG looked amazing. And some of the video things that I've seen where they show, like, some gameplay is. They did a tech demo of a monkey flying around. Now, is it like a No Man's Sky where you can, like, go to different planets? I don't know. Because they didn't say anything about it. I don't know. They didn't say anything about it. And then they, they made it worse by showing that tech demo to where you can, like, go around the planet. And then you can leave the orbit of the planet. So it's like... 
is there more planets to go to? Like, is, is it, it going to be, be like a full, like, yeah, is it going to be like a Mass Effect where you can actually, like, just go through and, like, just do whatever and right. have missions on other planets? Right. So it's like, how big is this game? And when is this game going to even come out? Because I don't think they showed a, a date for it. They just said, help us make it. Yeah. <laughs> like, help us uh, make it and improve this game. And it's like, oh, that's not a good sign. No. Um,. Yeah, you got to join, like, the Space Monkey program or something like that. Yeah. I did sign up for that because I'm like, ah, why not? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe we'll get in a beta that we can showcase right. on the channel. Right. But uh, it looked interesting. I'm excited for it. The only thing that I'm like, okay, you bring it back after how many years? And yeah. you show another CG trailer. I know. You just... You just show a better looking CG trailer. And it's a complete reboot versus a sequel. I just, you just. I mean, not a reboot. Sorry, a prequel. Yeah, you just you have to, you you have to have a little bit of gameplay to show for each game. It's especially just, that's just all there is to well, it. Well, especially a game on that caliber. Because yeah. now it's becoming kind of like a Last Guardian. Right. Oh. I mean, seriously though, like, <laughs> I know. like, and I hate to combine, like, compare it, but it's like. You you come back after years of not showing the game, and you show another CG trailer that, yes, looks amazing, but you don't show game. You don't show game. Right. You show a tech demo after the press conference. Why not show a big, in-depth thing talking about that for the conference? Right. You know, after the, the, the awesome trailer. Be like, hey, you know, this game's coming out. This well, this game isn't coming out for a while, but let's show you what we have right now, sure. and then show him talking about the tech. Yeah, that I think like that would have been cool instead of splitting it up. But you know, they they kind of had a time frame thing, and they had it was cool that they had all the devs come up and yeah. get all excited about yeah. saying that we can finally talk about it and stuff like that. Do you think that they should have kept the name Beyond Good and Evil 2, or they should have said something like prequel-wise? Like, just kind of call it, mess with the wording, per se, and not call it Beyond Good and Evil 2, because it's not really sequel now, since it's a prequel. Maybe they'll change it. I think it. they're going to change it. I think they just wanted to say Beyond Good and Evil 2 just, just to showcase. Just say that it's, it's coming it's, back. It's Beyond Good and mm-hmm. Evil, you know? So... But, yeah, other than that, um, Ubisoft's press conference had a lot of good content. Yeah, it did. They had some nice surprises. I think, other than what we'll talk about next, or the, I don't know what's next. <laughs> um, when is, when are we, are we talking about Nintendo next? Um, or are you... We'll save Nintendo for last. Okay. So, yeah. Other than Nintendo, I think this was a pretty decent conference. Um, yeah. Had a lot of cool... It was all games. Yeah. All games. They showed... Lots of new stuff. Yeah. Lots of new stuff. They showed some games that uh didn't think that were going to come out. So, hopefully next year we'll see Splinter Cell. Just maybe. Yeah. Just... Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I will strangle you, Ubisoft. Maybe PSX. They'll show it off on PS4. Don't give my hopes up, man. Don't give my hopes up. So, that's been the the Sony, the Ubisoft conference. Uh, Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to be talking about Sony's E3 press conference. Stay tuned. What is, what, what, what is happening? What is that? Are they trying to throw... <laughs> They're burning down the church. There's shotgun ammo right there. Oh, 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 I did it again. Woo-hoo, he shot him! Oh. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. What is that?